Okay, let's get the ball rolling. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We know how busy you are, and we really appreciate you taking the time to join us and spend the next 45 minutes or so with us. Today's webinar is with Forrester Consulting, and it's called Cost Savings and Business Benefits Enabled by Tagograph. We all hope you find this webinar to be both interesting and informative. I have the uh, special privilege and honor uh, to introduce two very illustrious uh, speakers to you today. First up is Noel Johanna. Noel is Vice President and Principal Analyst at Forrester Research. In his role, Noel covers big data, data warehouses, data fabric, data integration, data virtualization, Hadoop, Spark, in memory, Translitical, NoSQL, Cloud, ETL, big data integration, data management, data tools, and data security for enterprise architecture professionals. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that that is a heck of a lot for one man to cover. His, his uh, current focus is on new and emerging markets, modern data architectures, cloud and hybrid cloud deployments. Welcome, Noel. Thanks, David. And I'm also very happy to introduce Molly Firth. Molly is a consultant on Forrester's Total Economic Impact team. She, Molly works with technology clients to quantify the cost benefits and ROI, the cost, sorry, the costs, the benefits and the ROI associated with technology investments. Welcome, Molly. Thanks, David. And here is our agenda. No, we'll kick things off uh, and spend 15, 20 minutes uh, uh, talking, uh, looking at market trends. Uh, Noel told me earlier that he could talk for an hour on this subject. So, uh, so, so, so he's always got lots of great information to share. We'll see how things go uh, in terms of timing, but uh, that's what we're thinking about. And then Molly will then look at the specifics of the total economic impact study that Forrester uh, did when he looked at the, uh, you know, the impact uh, that, uh, Tiger I can have on a, on, a, on a composite company. Molly will go into that in much more detail. We'll leave some time at the end for Q&A. Please feel free to submit your questions and then I'll do a quick wrap up um, once, once we're done with the Q&A. Uh, just a one, uh, a couple of comments on housekeeping. Um, of course, you know we all know how Zoom works these days. Your devices are muted, but we, you can ask questions at any time. Uh, there's two ways to do that. The way we prefer is if you do that through the Q&A at the bottom. Uh, don't wait till the end of the webinar to submit your questions. Feel free to do that at any time. Uh, uh, our webinar is being recorded and we will send you the recording of the webinar itself and also the slides uh, shortly after the webinar concludes. Typically, my colleagues in marketing are able to get uh, that email sent within a couple of hours. So look in your inbox uh, for that. And uh, of course, if you have any issues with Zoom, uh, contact me uh, through chat and I'll do my best to troubleshoot them in real time. So enough of me talking. You're not here to hear me uh, uh, talk. Uh, you're here to hear our two speakers, Noel Johanna and Molly Firth. So with that, I will pass things over to you, Molly, uh, to take it away. All right. Um, I guess uh, let, let me start with uh, first of all talking about uh, digital transformation. Um, before we do that, uh, good morning, good mo good afternoon to everyone on the call for attending this um, session. Uh, it's great to be on this uh, session talking about graph technology. It's one of my favorite topics, actually. So I, as an analyst, uh, get to speak to a lot of customers every day. These are large companies, mid-sized organizations across the globe. And you know, every organization is running into data issues. <laughs> Who isn't, I guess, you know, right? <laughs> because we got all these volumes of data, we got all these silos of data. So how do you really blend in, integrate, orchestrate, transform data, especially as you move to the cloud, it becomes uh, a bigger challenge uh, as well. So I'm gonna share some insights around what we see happening in the industry 
uh, especially to accelerate the digital transformation strategies for organizations. I know this is a big initiative for companies out there, but certainly, uh, certainly you know, you have to really drive some of those new generation of tooling and technology to really differentiate and to really to accelerate uh, the use case scenarios. Uh, next slide. So if you know, um, there is um, this whole notion of um, digital transformation continues to be a top priority for global enterprises. <clears throat> In fact, we recently did a, a survey. We asked uh, organizations, you know, what is the biggest challenge when it comes to uh, digital transformation execution? And, and the number one issue is, is to do with um, data issues. <laughs> no surprises there, right? Data is a big issue because, you know, when you have all this data set structured and unstructured and semi-structured, and you got on on premises, you got it in the cloud, you got it in multi-cloud, and you got it in edges as well. Um, how do you really blend in, orchestrate this data, right? In fact, more than thirty percent of data in an organization is duplicated. <laughs> I'm sure it's a lot more in, in your organization as well because you make copies and copies of data, and when you make copies and copies of data, uh, the, there's lack of consistency and trustedness of data because one data stream may change, the second may not, right? So this is one big issue there. Um, let, next slide. So what's happening is that the digital transformation, uh, what we believe must be powered by this new generation of solutions to remain competitive. You know, legacy systems and legacy architectures uh, are not keeping up because the demand is more real time, the demand is more connected data, the demand is more self-service. And if you look at all of some of these attributes, they didn't never existed in the traditional legacy platforms, right? So this is a big issue. So we believe that you have to really embrace some of these new generation of technologies to really accelerate uh, the, the use case scenarios, but also remain competitive. One example is graph. Graph is obviously one of the things we are seeing as one of the hottest technologies out there to really drive that connections of data. I'll talk more about Graph, but this is something which we've seen a lot more uh, adoption in, in, in the organizations out there. There's also cloud, right? I think everyone is heading the cloud, I guess, as well. Uh, why cloud? Because all of the innovation is happening in the cloud. It also saves you money. It also minimizes vendor lock-in. Uh, and all the benefits of collaboration is happening in the cloud as well, right? So cloud is obviously should be on your strategy as well. I'm sure you guys are, uh, are working on that and, and AI as well, right? Uh, and, and there are other bubbles as well, right? I mean, I'm not saying that these are the only three bubbles, but these are the, the most important bubbles at the moment where organizations are finding a lot of value from these technologies when it comes to digital transformation. Next slide. Now, if you look at it, you know, we talked about data <laughs> spread across on premises and cloud, and we got all these data sources like system of record data, ERP, CRM, clickstream data, and, you know, blending orchestrating data to get a customer 360 or a business 360 or a product 360 uh, can be a nightmare, right? Creating data connections can be very, very complex and time consuming. Um, imagine if you guys are doing relational databases, right? And if you try to do a table join, for example, uh, of, of two tables, it's pretty much easy. What about 10 tables? It becomes a nightmare. And 100 tables, like, forget about it. <laughs> so the complexity starts to grow as you have more data, as you know, traditional technology cannot keep up, right? So you really need to have something which is more, uh, you know, powerful and some innovative technology to drive these results. But what we're seeing as a result is that today, organizations really want to leverage all kinds of data, you know, to really drive those um, customer ex uh, experience initiatives, um, customer intelligence initiatives, IoT, fraud detection, risk analytics, all of these new generation of, uh, of use cases are driving um, a platform that needs to be very well integrated and, and orchestrated as well. So next slide. So graph simplifies data connections. So what happens is that if you look at it, graph uh, simplifies data connections at scale. 
that's a very important at scale. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you're doing a small amount of data connections, well, okay. I mean, anyone can do it, but maybe even outside graph as well. But as you start to look at a scale factor, when you're trying to do lots, lots of data running into, into billions of records and trillions of records, it can become a nightmare, right? And the graph really simplifies it. And, and the real examples I would, be, I would say is like social media, right? Uh, imagine like all of the social media vendors, um, like the Facebooks and Twitters and LinkedIn's of the world uh, gives you recommendations. By the way, you may know this friend, how are they coming to a conclusion of that, right? It's through connections, right? Data connections. Now, now, now someone is not writing a program <laughs> trying to join a billion people across the planet. Um, that could be a nightmare. But you also have to have, to have this graph technology to really integrate and orchestrate this data in a very simplified manner, uh, which says, okay, these are the possibilities of these connections of data, right? So graph, what it does is simplify those connections and patterns of data. So the patterns we see here are the ones which are really getting connected in a very simplified manner, which I think is really a value uh, proposition of, of this. Next slide. <clears throat> so what happens is that graph simplifies connected data, delivers a platform to drive this digital transformation initiative. So you may be wanting to integrate, orchestrate, ERP, social data, clickstream data, uh, like, a, like like right now, Customer 360 is a big initiative in most of the organizations out there, right? And Customer 360 is difficult to do. Uh, you want to know, you want to upsell, cross-sell more products and services to your customer, whether it's a consumer or maybe it's a business. So B2B or B2C environments. It, it needs to have a better understanding about who, what kind of things they like, dislike, but also you want to be able to integrate system of record could be a data sitting in your master data, uh, but also a system of interaction data, which could be sitting in a clickstream data somewhere else. How do they blend in, right? So this, this really gets simplified through the graph engines. Next slide. So I guess the question comes back is a lot of people ask me, okay, why use graph databases, right? I mean, because graph has been around, uh, I guess, for a while, but now more recently, has taken off in a big way. And, and why is that the case? Because number one, makes connections quicker and, and more accurate, right? I, I think this is a big thing for new and emerging business use cases. So you're really driving some of those connection points. Uh, it makes it a lot simpler and easier to do uh, versus doing it you know, in, in, a, in a different manner, I guess, right? So connections is a very big thing. Data analysis performance, right? This is the second big thing of graph databases. It's that you're able to drive these insights, the queries, the analytics at the next level. Performance is a big factor, especially uh, when you want to be able to provide better customer experience right away in seconds and milliseconds, right? Not in days <laughs> or, or even hours for the matter, I guess, right? So analysis or perform data analysis and, and especially in real time becomes a very, very important. Uncover hidden connections. Now, this is one of the biggest issue. Um, only about 35% of data today is used for analytics. Only 35% in most organizations, by the way. Now, what about the other 65%? What happens to that? Well, this is exactly what this graph does. Graph can enable those, uh, uncovers those hidden connections, which you may not be uh, able to leverage through data science and advanced analytics, right? So this is something which we've seen based on customer feedback in uh, financial services industries and in retail industries and in manufacturing ind industries uh, as well. So this is a big thing uh, which customers are really supporting as well. Improve staff productivity, uh, which I think is a big issue, right? Because right now, as I mentioned, if, if you don't do graph, what are you doing then? Well, you're manually writing Java, C Sharp, Python code, Scala code, uh, and, and this takes forever, right? Imagine someone uh, walking up and saying, hey, write me a code for doing some data connections of this basic data. Yeah, the, the developer will say, come back uh, tomorrow, right? I mean, how about I getting it in a second? Well, you can't do that in a second, right? <laughs> Coding in a second. But but Graph no, really has um, a new generation of query tooling like GraphQL, which really improves the coding aspects of it, really improves the productivity aspects of it as well. So staff productivity is important for, data, for developers, for data engineers, for data analysts, 
and, and, and business analysts as well. So this really uh, helps across personas, not just one persona, which I think is important as well. Um, addresses the new business needs. Uh, I think this is a very important point. Uh, because the fact that you want to be able to drive results, and, and especially with the new, new generation of AI machine learning, field, people are trying to embrace, right? A graph really helps you with that, especially with uh, driving better success with machine learning model, right? Uh, if you're trying to build machine learning models, it really provides you with context about customer data and customer and business data. This really blends very well. Uh, so graph databases can integrate with all these new requirements like AI machine learning uh, as well. So if you see all these benefits, uh, I think really uh, you know has a lot of value proposition, especially coming in from a traditional platform into this modern platform as we call it uh, is, is critical. You know, next slide. So I guess the question comes back is, um, you know, what can you do with graph, I guess, you know, right? I mean, it's got all these benefits, right? I mean, like, <laughs> so, so if you look at it from the uh, acceleration part of it, if you back up on the previous slide, so if you look at it from that perspective, graph can accelerate many business use cases. Um, and, and as I mentioned, you know, there's obviously customer 360. Um, I, th I think this is the, one of the biggest of all of the graph deployments we have seen on the planet. Close to 30% of all deployments of graph have to do with customer 360. Not surprising, right? <laughs> Why? Because I think everyone strives to improve customer success, customer experience in, in a big way, right? So customer 360 is something which is definitely uh, an important initiative. And this is something which we see companies do a lot. Um, one of the things we see in customer 360 is the fact that you're able to drive that connection points, as I mentioned, on-premises data connections, as well as the uh, clickstream data connections and log stream data connection and social media data connections, right? And, and the SaaS data um, sources connection as well. So this could be connected a lot simpler with graph, right? So this is a big initiative, big, big focus area. Uh, customer intelligence, right? Uh, customer churn, uh, especially during the pandemic. So I, I speak to about, you know, four to five customers every day. And, and since the pandemic, what we have seen is that, uh, you know, customer churn <laughs> has been one of the big priorities for organizations, right? You're minimizing customer churn. So how do you minimize customer churn? Because now customers are doing all this digital shopping or the virtual shopping. Uh, you really want to improve that, that scenario. So this is a big initiative. So customer intelligence, I would say, is, a, is an area which is where Graph can really help to connect the dots. You can minimize this um, customer churn. You can really identify customers who are likely to churn in, in the coming weeks or days. So this is an advantage of uh, graph as well. IoT, I think everyone deals with IoT <laughs> analytics, right? IoT analytics is all about really making that connections um, of data like machine data and, and, and also the data from coming from all these sensor environments to predict machine failures, right? Predicting machine failures in an auto manufacturing company or any manufacturing company is a big issue, right? Uh, and graph can really simplify those connections. And, and we have seen organizations using a graph in manufacturing plants as well today. Um, in fact, so, so microservices based applications, I think is growing across uh, all of the scenarios today. And, and microservices is something which is, uh, is going to really improve uh, over time, I guess, you know, and, and I think graph is a good example because it can really blend in those connection points a lot simpler. For, for microservices. In other words, you don't have to do the integration in it at the microservices layer, but at that graph database layer. You can also do risk analytics, industry specific analytics, operational insights, and, and many more. You know? So I think the list goes on and on and on. You know? I mean, I think, I think graph has got so much value proposition, which I think is critical uh, for every organization to start to have a strategy uh, going forward. Next slide. So graph can also lower cost of digital transformation initiatives, right? 
cost? I mean, how do you lower cost with graph? <laughs> right? We talked about all the innovation going on with all of the benefits and all of the use cases, then, but you can also lower cost. It's kind of amazing, right? And I think that's like one of the things which can really drive value is, is not only just can improve the, the transformation and, and also the improve the competitive advantage, but also lower your costs through automation, through improved productivity of the staff, to lower hardware requirements. You can lower hardware requirements, which is very important. And also accelerated use cases, right? As I mentioned, which I think every organization are, are striving on as well. And I guess to hear more about this, uh, I will hand it over to Molly to talk more about the TEI study um, we did for Tyograph. Thanks, Noel. Hello, everyone. My name is Molly Firth, and I'm a consultant here at Forrester in our total economic impact practice. I have the pleasure of sharing with you the results of the study that was commissioned by TigerGraph. <laughs> For this report, Forrester interviewed six TigerGraph customers. By speaking to actual customers, Forrester gets firsthand information on what motivated the company to make the investment in TigerGraph and how this investment has impacted their organization. Let's start by learning about TEI, then I'll walk through a few pieces of the customer journey, and then we can get to the main event of the session, the return on investment calculation and business case benefits. The total economic impact is a methodology that Forrester has been using to help our clients for nearly 20 years. And we do this because in one of our many surveys, we found that over 90% of decision makers say that it's important for them to have a next level business case that makes an economic justification for an investment. So what makes an effective business case? Traditionally, some business cases look at TCO, total cost of ownership. This approach looks solely at what a solution is going to cost and what it's going to save in terms of hardware, software, and labor. Then there's an ROI, return on investment business case study. Here, we're also looking at the impact of that technology and users in terms of productivity and effectiveness, among other things. With TEI, we go even further than just the total cost of ownership or even ROI by looking at the total business impact, including risk and uncertainty, as well as the future strategic impact of technology investments. We feel this presents a holistic picture of the technology investment and aids companies in making a more complete investment decision. So in summary, TEI is a proven, consistent, repeatable methodology to justify technology investments. Before we spoke to the TigerGraph customers, we started with some due diligence. We gathered expertise internally at Forrester, consulting with subject matter experts, including Noel Yohanna, principal analyst at Forrester. And we also spoke to the subject matter experts at TigerGraph. We then spoke to six customers who are using TigerGraph today for their graph database needs. We do this to really understand what the customer's experience has been. We were able to ask them directly, what kind of benefits have you seen? What have you gotten out of the investment in the solution? We then constructed a representative financial model based upon the data gathered during the customer interview. The financial model is meant to provide organizations with a framework to measure and evaluate the financial impact of investing in TigerGraph. And finally, we wrote the case study document to summarize those financial findings, but also to present some more color behind the numbers to really share about what we heard in those interviews beyond just the financial metrics. <laughs> to start out, I'll highlight the key findings from our report before sharing the details of our analysis. Based on our analysis, we determined that our composite organization experienced a three-year ROI of 600%, benefits of $24.28 million, and a net present value of $20.81 million. All the numbers I'm about to share in the analysis that follows are in their present value, 
meaning that they've been adjusted to reflect that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. Net present value is simply the total benefits minus the total costs. For this study, we interviewed six customers from a range of sectors, including healthcare, financial services, and manufacturing. The interviewees were executives, engineers, and data scientists based in the US and UK who were intimately involved with their organization's graph strategy. In order to set a baseline, we asked interviewees to describe their environments prior to their Tiger Graph investment. Before the interviewed organizations adopted Tiger Graph, there were several challenges they faced. Data was siloed and stored in relational databases. Questions took weeks to answer or could not be answered at all. And data could not be leveraged to its full extent. Here's a quote from a customer in financial services. We needed a graph technology that would help us in a real time enterprise scalable manner to tick and tie what we call non-obvious relationships together. With Tiger Graph, that can happen in a matter of seconds or minutes. We took the experiences and stories of the customers from the interviews, and we created a composite organization that is representative of all the interviewees and their common experiences, all while keeping the companies completely anonymous. Our composite is an enterprise with annual revenues of $5 billion, based in the US with global operations for whom data is a matter of strategic and competitive importance. Of the 20,000 employees, 1,000 are customer service representatives and there's also a 20 person data science team. The organization provides products and services to 4 million customers in both the B2C and B2B space. The Tiger Graph use cases the composite organization um, uses are fraud detection, visualization, data analysis, customer 360, and entity resolution. <laughs> Moving on to our findings, I'm sure you're saying, where did you come up with a 600% ROI? $20.81 million net present value and total benefits of $24.28 million for the solution. Well, it was from five key benefits that customers described and then were quantified for our composite organization. Profit from new products and services attributed to Tiger Graph, fraud loss cost avoidance, cost avoidance from system retirement, data team productivity improvement, and customer service representative productivity improvement. Within the actual study, we break down the calculations for each benefit into a financial framework that's transparent and easy to understand. It shows what line items are calculations, which characteristics are from our composite organization, and the inputs from the interviews. And the hope is that you get a, your hands on a copy of the study and use the frameworks we've developed to create your own business case for Tiger Graph. In the meantime, I'm going to give you an overview of the five benefits. The first benefit is profit from new products and services attributed to Tiger Graph. Our composite organization uncovered insights that made new products and services possible. A greater understanding of customer and organizational data through fast and powerful analysis opened a wide variety of avenues for organizations to provide new products and services, attract new customers, and generate new revenue resulting in increased profits. Assuming each new customer generated $100,000 in annual revenue, Tiger Graph helped the composite organization reach $300 million in additional revenue over the course of the three years. Our composite organization experiences $9.6 million in profits across the three-year analysis. Here's a quote from a customer about how Tiger Graph helped them analyze relationships across applications. 
a billion nodes within three months is just not manageable by a lot of relational databases and even some of the graph databases on the market. For us, without this graph database, there's really no way for us to figure out the relationships among all these different applications. And from another customer, TigerGraph can hit scale to better describe customer behavior. Our second benefit quantifies the impact of TigerGraph in allowing organizations to accurately target fraudulent activity to stop fraud losses. TigerGraph made it possible for the composite organization to avoid 10% of annual fraud loss with a three-year risk-adjusted present value of $7.3 million. Interviews leads found that the ability to scale to accommodate the size and nature of the data, the computing performance, and the ability to create flexible and robust algorithms help them to target fraudulent activity with precision and allocate resources to, to stop fraudsters. <laughs> For the third benefit, interviewed organizations shared that TigerGraph enabled efficiencies in hardware and software, making it possible to safely retire legacy systems and achieve cost savings. Our composite organization saved $1 million in year two and $2 million in year three. We calculate a value of this benefit at $2.1 million over the course of the three-year analysis. For the fourth benefit, interviewed organizations shared that TigerGraph improved and simplified data models and could flexibly contemplate algorithms. As a result, data science teams could manage data more efficiently and complete queries more quickly, realizing a 70% improvement in productivity. We calculate a value for this benefit at $2.5 million over the course of the three-year analysis. For the fifth benefit, Interviewed organizations told us that powerful visualizations that united data from multiple sources, combined with no-code, low-code features, allowed non-technical users to react and provide better, more efficient service, increasing productivity. As a result, customer service representatives experienced a 20% improvement in productivity. We calculate a value of at 2.5 seven million dollars over the course of the three-year analysis. The five benefit categories I just walked you through are incredibly important, but customers also shared stories of success that were not quantified for this study. The first is multigraph. With TigerGraph, it was possible to restrict access to data within the graph environment in support of privacy, security, and compliance. Where appropriate, decision makers had complete information about access data and had confidence in the available security and compliance features of TigerGraph, even in highly regulated sectors. The next is visualization. TigerGraph supported intuitive, self-explanatory visualizations that gave a complete and unified picture of customer experiences and needs, equipping organizations to find best next steps and resulting in improved customer satisfaction and uplift to net promoter scores. The last is ease of use. Interviewees identified several features that contributed to ease and flexibility of experience, including G-SQL, the proprietary Turing complete programming language used by TigerGraph. Graph developers on data, the data science team quickly adopted the tool based on G-SQL similar to SQL. Data scientist professionals at interviewees organizations found it was easy to write and customize algorithms. <laughs> TigerGraph's low and no code capabilities enabled increased self-service for non-technical users, allowing a range of personas to investigate and react. Here's another customer quote. Uh, 
We have been leveraging graphs outputs to improve the swath of existing processes in graph. And it's really a force multiplier because you just can't do it without the graph database. <laughs> we talked about the benefits, now a brief word about costs. The costs involved in adopting TigerGraph as a graph database solution fall into two categories, TigerGraph fees and development costs. We calculate that over the course of the three-year analysis that the risk-adjusted present value costs will total $3.68 million for our composite organization. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction. Now go out and read the full study and build your own business case for Tiger Graph. Back to you, David. Thanks, Molly. That was terrific. So I will share my screen momentarily. Good job. Thank you, Noel, as well. Just give me a second while I get uh, organized. Almost there. <clears throat> Terrific. <clears throat> um, good. So um, again, uh, thank you. Uh, no, your presentation was <laughs> was terrific, and uh, and uh, I know you could have talked for a lot longer than you <laughs> did. So I, I really appreciate your, uh, your discipline and, and, and keeping an eye yeah. on the clock. Uh, but you shared a, a lot of good information and I took a lot of notes. So thank you very much for, for that. Uh, and then Molly, that was very a very thorough walkthrough of, your, of the methodology and the results. Thank you very much for, for that too. So um, we have one, we have a couple of questions that have come in from the audience. Um, please, this is your opportunity. We have, uh, we have about five, 10 or 15 minutes remaining. So this is your opportunity to, to ask questions uh, of two, uh, two top people. At Forrester, and uh, and uh, you know the questions can be market trends related for Noel or, or specific to the TEI methodology or indeed the tie graph uh, uh, study itself um, to to Molly. Um, so uh, first question we have from the audience is: Can you share a link to the full study? Yes, we will be delighted to do so, and that will be in the follow up email that will come out uh, shortly after this. Uh, webinar wraps up. So that webinar, sorry, that email will include uh, the recording of this session, and it'll also include a link to uh, the to the uh, to the TEI study that uh, you know Noah, Molly, and, and the team worked on. Um, there was a question about how does Tiger Graph, how do the results of our TEI study compare to other graph solutions? Uh, and I am pleased to say that of the companies, uh, not every graph company has commissioned a study from Forrester. And if any of them are listening, then I really encourage them to do so. Uh, but for those companies that we are aware have uh, gone through, you know, have commissioned a similar study, I'm very pleased to say that our results are significantly higher. Uh, we here at Tigraph, we were very, very delighted uh, when we saw the results. Um, uh, Follow-up question is great. If there are any benchmark studies, would be great if you could share, thank you. Uh, for the TEI studies themselves, uh, I would encourage the, uh, you to, to you know, do a search on, online. That's not something I'm necessarily go, you know, privy or you know, in a position to share competitors' information, but if you Google you know, other companies, um, you'll find them. It's not difficult. Uh, or you can go to the uh, Forrester website. Uh, and, I, and for our study itself, uh, that, like I say, we'll include that in the, uh, in the email that will come out shortly after this uh, webinar. And then also um, there are other, you know, benchmark, different types of benchmark studies where, you know, we compare uh, other factors in addition to the economic costs. So those types of studies are on the website, our website. And if anyone wants something specific to be sent to them, please reach out to me, david.ronald at tigeraff.com. And I'll be very happy to, to forward them along. Uh, another question that just came in is, what market share does Tigraph currently have? Are they the biggest player in graph analytics? No, we are not, but we maybe are uh, maybe the fastest growing. Um, we certainly have uh, been in the privileged position of, uh, you know, we were not the first company to develop a, a graph solution. So we can look at 
uh, the precedents and we can see what worked and what didn't work and we can learn from them uh, in developing our own uh, in our own solution and we can do some things I would say many things uh, better uh, for example you know having a you know a database is inherently more scalable because of the way it's architected uh, enables uh, many of the benefits uh, you'll uh, Noel talked about how graph enables connections uh, to you know make connections at scale and I would say that's that's uh, uh, something that high graph is I, I you know is especially well suited to because of the way we architected our database. Um, I'm talking quickly because uh, many questions are coming in uh, and I'm trying to get to, to all of them. Um, another question came in, what the, what, to what degree did the customers in the study already have experience with graph databases? I think this is a question for you, Molly. Uh, to, this is from the anonymous attendee. Uh, to what degree did the customers in the study already have experience with graph databases? How much learning of graph databases had to take place? Absolutely, David. Um, across the six customers, there was a, a, a range of experiences. It was not uncommon for um, customers to have attempted to use um, another uh, graph product or have considered using another graph product. Um, but there was a range of experiences and a range of maturity. Interesting. A question for you, Noel. Um, so, in it, so you, you, uh, you know, you've talked about how you know you talked about the benefits. You talked about how uh, you know one of the comments you made. And I make it a note of this one. Uh, was graph uh, can, can you know is one of the one of the enablers of digital transformation. You also talked about how you know graph uh, 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 you know enables connections to be made at scale. You talked about how graph can be used for a variety of use cases. You had a list and. Customer 360 was on there, customer intelligence, you know, IoT devices and so on and so forth. Um, from your experience and your interactions with your clients, uh, what, what do you see as the biggest hurdle or obstacle uh, uh, to, to your clients adopting Graph given the, all these benefits? Is there, is there one thing that you know, they need, like a hump they need to get over uh, or is it a multitude of different things? Yeah, no, I, I think it's a great question. Um, you know, what we see is actually graph being a, a newer technology, uh, people don't sometimes feel comfortable with getting to graph actually <laughs> for that reason, because it's a newer technology and they've not been uh, leveraging it in the past, right? Uh, legacy platforms have been their, their core strength. So, you know, there is a, a learning curve uh, associated with graph initially to get, a, get over with that hump of understanding what exactly it does and doesn't do, and, and how can people leverage it? So it, initially there is actually, the first project when you do on a graph is gonna take a bit longer, uh, but then the second project slows, you know, accelerates the, the pace. So I, I would say, you know, you, uh, people should definitely embrace the graph um, just for the fact that the benefits uh, uh, outcome the, the, the challenges, because initially there may be certain just a learning curve, as I mentioned, um, but, you know, I think uh, also start with, uh, you know, a project which can really get you going in terms of a, a project which can actually has a, a bigger challenge today, like the connection of data you want, you're trying to do and, and, and customers, I mean, um, and, and it's taking a lot of time trying to build that project in, in, in a traditional technology, uh, leverage graph and, and see what the benefit would be. So I would say, you know, there is certain things, um, but I, I, think, I think as we've seen on the TI study, first of all, there's a lot of productivity benefits you can achieve uh, as you start to embrace it, as you start to leverage in production, um, as you start to leverage in, into production environments like server environments and all, right? So it can really benefit from hardware, from software, from people, from resources, from execution of use cases. So a broader portfolio of things start to show up actually with Graph actually, right? So, so based on customer feedback we've gotten, even outside the TEI study, uh, we are finding a lot of people who have embraced Graph haven't gone back. <laughs> right. so, <laughs> because the benefits are so tremendous with graph, um, it, it really makes a big difference, you know. Terrific, terrific. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Uh, another question that came in from the audience is, what is the largest total data set size in terabytes that TIGRAPH can reasonably handle? Uh, so we, are, we, we, we want to be tested. 
uh, we, 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 you know, we've done a benchmark uh, using the linked data benchmark council uh, social network uh, benchmark methodology at initially last year at 4.8 terabytes. And uh, that was too easy for us. So then we, uh, we wanted to raise the bar. And so we, uh, we decided to, do, uh, to test ourselves uh, at the 36 terabyte benchmark. And that was too easy for us. So now we're, we're, we're trying to see if we can hit 100, ter you know, benchmark at 100 terabytes. And, and, uh, and there's no stopping us. So as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, we were in a fortunate position of being able to, you know, from the beginning, architect our, our graph database for scale. Uh, and for other other core functionalities, and so um, you know, we I think it is reasonable to say that we are the most scalable uh, graph database, uh, and so you know, we're already proven at thirty six terabytes. You know, we're on our way to test benchmarking at one hundred terabytes, and so forth. Um, I just want to add to, add, uh, to David's uh, comments. I guess uh, is, is the fact that um, you know the fact uh, most of the graph implementations we have seen. Um, no, don't run into hundreds of terabytes, just to let you know. And normally graph, even though you have trillions of nodes, trillions of nodes won't run into more than a few terabytes at the most, right? Uh, but but if you're running into the extreme scale requirements of tens of terabytes, right? That's what uh, David is mentioning. Um, that can also be done, right? In, in terms of uh, processing as well, right? So, so we are gonna see the, the graph uh, deployments to touching those boundaries of tens to maybe hundreds of terabytes in the next you know, five years. But today at the moment, I don't think we've seen customers really demanding that as much at that high end because a lot of data can sit into um, a few terabytes actually. In fact, some, some of them are in a few gigabytes as well, obviously at the starting levels. <laughs> but I would say it is important. Uh, performance obviously is a, cr a critical component of, of and, and scale is, is important as well. So whenever organizations are looking at these uh, you know deployments and, and, and shortlisting vendor solution, I would definitely look at uh, you know performance and scale as, as key criteria, especially as you're going to grow your your requirements in the coming years, you know yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, I think we may have lost Molly. I think Molly dropped off. Uh, I had a question here for her. Um, one, maybe one final question before we wrap up, uh, Noel. It's, maybe you can, it's an inter interesting question and, and maybe you can talk about this from, more from the experience of your clients. And it's, are there any computer hardware issues that are restricting how graph databases can be used? And I think we can broaden that question to say, you know, are there any sort of integration issues uh, you know, maybe hardware or software integration issues that, you know, that there's some that, that, no, you, that your clients tend to come up against that have to be addressed in order for a graph database to really. It's a good question. Value. It's a good question, actually, you know. So, um, you know, putting this into memory plays a big role, right? I mean, if you're going to put it on disk drive, <laughs> it's a bit slower, right? That's one thing. But, but also scale out is going to be a big factor as well, right? Having it scaled out across multiple servers in a cluster is important as well, right? Because normally you would not be able to scale within a single server. So you have to look at the scale out architecture as well, right? Uh, but but I don't think there's any, any kind of limitation of graph technology per se on a hardware architecture today. It can run within a single server. It can run across servers as well and leverage um, DRAM and flash and SSD to read drives of some of the low latency access to data, which I think is important. It's the core element is the software has to really exploit that, that scaled out architecture uh, and, and also the DRAM and flash, um, which in, in a more extensive uh, manner. So I think those are the key components of, of graph success, right? So, so yeah. Awesome, great answer. Thank you, No, uh, Molly, welcome back. Uh, I saw that you dropped off for a, a few seconds. Uh, one final question for you before we wrap up. Um, so how long did the study take, the TEI study take, and uh, what industries uh, were the customers, I think you mentioned there were six, what industries were they, are they in? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we spoke to um, the six customers over the course of several months in 2021. Um, and we spoke to, there are more details in the report. Um, the customers are anonymized, but you, uh, there are a few more details to help uh, give a sense of what types of customers we uh, spoke to, uh, the size of the companies, things of that nature. We spoke to an auto manufacturing company, um, a healthcare company, and then we spoke to 
for financial services companies. Okay, terrific. All right, well, I know that we're five minutes over time. Um, you had uh, very kindly agreed to, to, to join for 45 minutes, uh, share your expertise. I think you've both knocked the ball out of the park. Uh, and, uh, and I think we'll wrap up. Uh, there are a couple of questions that we didn't get to. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll answer those questions <clears throat> separately. Um, but I want to thank you both, uh, uh, Molly and uh, Noel. Uh, it was a ter terrific session. <clears throat> um, I, I made a lot of notes, uh, Noel, when you were talking about the market trends. And, uh, and I even learned some things about the, you know, the study itself, uh, Molly, from your presentation, even though I was part of the process. So, so that just shows you how good of a presenter you are. Um, key thing is uh, there'll be an email, <clears throat> excuse me, an email uh, to, uh, going to, to all of the attendees shortly. <clears throat> Should be within a couple of hours. Again, uh, we'll include the link to the recording. We'll include a link to the uh, TEI study. Um, feel free to reach out to us um, with, with questions. Uh, and I'll just say that, you know, if this has piqued your interest in, 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 in learning more about graph and tie graph specifically, <clears throat> excuse me, there are a number of ways that you can do so. Uh, tie graph cloud is a terrific way for you to get started. Uh, you can create an account uh, in just in a few minutes, about six, seven or eight minutes uh, and get started. There are over 25 starter kits. Uh, these starter kits are there to help, uh, you know, make it easier for someone to, to, you know, dip their toes in the water, if you will. And these starter kits are uh, cover a range of uh, use cases. They're in financial services, they're in supply chain, uh, they're in they're in uh, healthcare and, and, and COVID and multiple different other other places, pre-populated with data and schema. And uh, so we encourage you to hop on to TriGraph Cloud uh, and begin to 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 get familiar with TriGraph. Uh, if you want to download. Uh, the Enterprise Edition, uh, you can do that uh, with this link, you know, through that link there or through our website. And great thing is it's, it's you know, we give you uh, up to 50 gigabits free. So oh, that's uh, plenty to get started with. And if you want to scale beyond that, you can talk to one of our salespeople uh, to, to get access to, to more uh, memory. Uh, test drive, that's uh, a way where we walk people through uh, a, a sample uh, use case. Uh, again, the intent here is to give people more familiarity with, with, with Graph and with Thai Graph. Um, we have a range of educational resources. We'd love for you to get certified. Uh, there's currently two courses on our website and multiple other courses that we're developing. Um, and, uh, uh, and I think that's, uh, I, I've gone through the certification process I'm Thai Graph certified, uh, uh, very proud of that, obviously, as you can tell, uh, and I encourage you to do that. Also join the community and uh, start interacting with people who are, are using Graph or looking to use Graph. So um, we're over time, that's why I'm talking so quickly. Uh, um, again, thank you for, to our terrific speakers, Noel and Molly. It was a terrific session. 